start the timer. Make sure to like the video, subscribe if you want to see more content just like this, and obviously ding dong the notification bell if you don't. <laughs> Go. Make sure to like the video, subscribe if you want to see more content just like this, and obviously ding dong that notification bell to be notified when we upload next because we upload every single week. <laughs> I've memorized that like the back of my fing hand. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to another episode of Push to Talk, the series where I, Lewis, talk about particular topics in and around the gaming sphere to help keep you guys in the loop. Today we are going to be talking about my favourite thing to talk about, esports, specifically Mobile Legends and its World Championship which just wrapped up this past weekend over in Jakarta, Indonesia. Although there's been a lot of controversy surrounding Moonton and Mobile Legends these past couple of years, there's no doubt that Mobile Legends is one of the biggest mobile esports in the world right now and this tournament proved it. Alongside the event, I'm also going to be talking about the winners from the Philippines, Echo, and how if they qualify for M5 at the end of the year, they may be defending their crown on home soil. But just before we get into that, you guys know what to do at this point, right? Make sure to like the video, subscribe if you want to see more content just like this, and obviously ding dong that notification bell to be notified when we upload next, because we upload every single week. Now with that out of the way, let's load up into the Land of Dawn. With $800,000 up for grabs, it may not have the biggest prize pool out of all the mobile esports. But needless to say, the M4 World Championship was a truly remarkable event for a number of reasons. For starters, it brought some of the best players and teams from across the globe to compete for the title of world champion. This level of competition is always exciting to watch as it showcases the skill and strategy of the top players in the game. In addition to the high level of competition, the M4 World Championship also featured some of the most exciting storylines and moments. Another great aspect of the M4 World Championship was the sheer amount of engagement and support from the community. The event was watched by millions of fans across the world, with an average viewership of 800,000 peaking at 4.2 million. Even watching from home, you could tell that the energy and excitement in the arena was palpable to say the least. And it was clear that the players were feeding off of the support that they were getting from the crowd. Even though the event ended in an all Filipino grand final in Jakarta, Indonesia, you could just tell that the fans love for the game was not constrained by who supported who. Of course, the event also featured top notch production values and a great viewing experience. The live broadcast was expertly produced and featured a talented cast of commentators and analysts who provided insightful analysis and commentary throughout the tournament. Additionally, the stage and lighting design were top-notch as well, creating an immersive and exciting atmosphere for players and fans alike. All in all, the M4 World Championship was a truly great event that delivered on every level. It was an experience that will be remembered for many, many years to come, and I'm sure that the next World Championship will be just as, if not more, exciting and thrilling. Speaking of which, it was also announced that M5 will be taking place at the end of the year in none other than the Philippines. Which I feel is fitting as this year's M4 ended with an all Filipino grand final featuring Blacklist International and Echo. Blacklist was last year's winners and they looked as if they were gonna go back to back. However, they were eventually thwarted by the second seed coming out of the Philippines, Echo, a star-studded and young roster with only two of whom having previous experience on the world stage. Going into the tournament, there were a lot of questions surrounding just who were the tournament favourites. There was no doubt that the Philippines and Indonesia were the two strongest regions, meaning that there were four candidates. Onik Esports, RRQ Hoshi, Echo and last year's world champions, Blacklist International. But in the group stage, a dark horse revealed itself in the form of Falcon Esports hailing unexpectedly from Myanmar. Now, why is this so surprising? Well, Myanmar as a region didn't participate in last year's M3. The last time Myanmar had any sort of representation on the world stage was actually back in M2 with the Burmese Ghouls, who lost to Bren Esports in the Grand Finals. So as a region, we knew that they could compete toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best of the absolute best. But given the year off, we didn't really know coming into this tournament what they had to offer. As a region, did they still possess some of the best teams in Southeast Asia? Which we would soon find out they could with Falcon Esports topping Group A, which in 
included the likes of Blacklist International. Heading into the playoffs, Falcon Esports unfortunately fell down to the lower bracket at the hands of Indonesia's very own Onik Esports. From there, they would tear through Argentina's S11 as well as Turkey's Incendio Supremacy, the latter of which had beaten them back in the group stage. Unfortunately, Falcon Esports' run ended in the lower bracket quarterfinals where they fell to another Indonesian team, RRQ Hoshi. The Burmese bulldozer of a team fought commendably, taking the series all the way to a game 5, but ultimately lost, placing a respectable 56th place overall and taking home 40,000 US dollars. I had an absolute blast following the underdog story that was Falcon Esports. Obviously because who doesn't love an underdog story, but also because me being Malaysian, both my representing teams were unfortunately knocked out in the lower bracket second round. Those teams being Toda and Team Huck. Now, I was actually fortunate enough to attend the Malaysian MPL finals where I got to see live Toda versus Team Huck. And boy, was the atmosphere ecstatic. Because of that, going into this tournament, I was rooting for either or. And on paper, it looked as if Malaysia's chances looked pretty good. Especially at the start of the group stage where we saw Todak take down Onik Esports. As the teams geared up for the playoffs, Team Hack and Todak had formidable opponents waiting for them in round 1. We saw Team Hack face off against the eventual champions, Echo. The series was hard fought as Team Hark brought it all the way to a game 5, but were quickly dismantled in the final game, lasting only 10 minutes and 56 seconds, making it one of the shortest games of the tournament. Todak, on the other hand, had to face RRQ Hoshi, who were definitely contenders to take it all home, and they proved that as they convincingly swept Todak 0 to 3. Now, in the lower bracket, Todak and Team Hark had to face off against Incendio Supremacy and The Valley, respectively. And Unfortunately, they were both sent home packing, placing 9th to 12th. Although not empty handed, as they both brought back 15,000 US dollars, which, after you do the conversion rate, is not bad at all. Although, yes, my patriotism is a bit hurt after seeing both Malaysian teams get knocked out so early on in the tournament, the event overall was a blast to watch. I thoroughly look forward to seeing, watching, and possibly being at M5 in December this year. But this leaves me with just one question. Will Filipino dominance continue to prevail going into this year? And that's it for this episode, folks. If you guys have any other topics you would like me to discuss, then feel free to leave a comment down below. And again, if you did enjoy this video, then be sure to like, subscribe if you want to see more content just like this, and obviously ding dong that notification bell to be notified when we upload next because we upload every single week. Thank you guys for watching. My name's been Lewis from Kakashi Operator, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Ciao for now. Oh, are your ever four world champions?